Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, people from all over the world, welcome to another Carnage House interview. Today I've got with me a, uh, a staple, a, uh, a big name in Australian alternative media, the Dusty Bogan. How are you, sir? Good, mate. Thanks for having me on. Mate, it's, um, it's been a long time coming, but actually it was Dia Beltran who kind of linked us up a little bit. So shout out to our girl there. She's a big fan of yours. Yeah, she's all good, Dia. She came to my birthday, bloody my 32nd birthday, not was long that, ago. So, was that filled? Did that have a lot of YouTube people there? Oh, the Versace Cowboy and Deer were there. So, that yeah. was it. Yeah. You we got did it. a few shoeies at the pub, you know, and all good. Is that where she got the idea from? Because she did one on a, on a video the other day. Oh, yeah. Probably. I can't say, you know, she's probably, everyone does shoeies, but you know what I mean? It's just the Aussie way. Yeah, well, I uh, I think your YouTube channel is is actually very, really refreshing. I haven't been that familiar with it until the past few days, but mm. I like how you um, have a lot of fun on your channel, and it's not like it's not super serious all the time. Is that I, I went back as well and had a look at some of your earlier videos. I think your first few ones were around like the gay marriage debate. Yeah. Um, yeah. What did you, when you first started your channel, what did you, did you think it was going to be like a, a fun, silly or sometimes, what did you think it was going to be? Well, yeah, I guess I knew I was going to gravitate back to my normal state. Like I can't really hide it. You know what I mean? I could try to put out an interview and be like, oh yeah, yeah. Try listen, you know, cause I did a few interviews with politicians and that and I'm like trying to keep it for real. Right. But I'm just gravitating back to my bogan state. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. this is the way it is, man. Like I am what I am. I kind of joke around, a bit of banter, a bit of I love a bit of conspiracy theories and yeah. You know, I'm a Christian, but I like a bit of like theoretical doctrine and I just like make up crazy biblical tangents and you know what I mean? And I'm I'm pretty like I'm actually quite politically uh open minded. I'm just like I'll like talk about, you know, if there's a f crazy lefty coming on who's like, oh, wants the government fucking involved in every aspect of their life, then maybe I'll rattle on a bit of, bit about like libertarian stuff mm. just to stir the pot. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it doesn't mean I'm like all out sold out on libertarianism. You know what I mean? Yeah. What would you say you're, um, well, I mean, not all of your videos are about politics, but, mm. but some of them are. And I guess that's what kind of joins us together in, in some ways that we both have like uh, interest in, in, I guess, politics. But where, how do you see things? I mean, you've been going around recently with the coronavirus <laughs> made in China poster, flagging yeah. that around. Yeah. You look like you're having a lot of fun doing that. Was that a good Mate, adventure? it was fucking fun as. I reckon everything I do is, is for the fun of it, man. Like, and, uh, you know, yeah, fair enough. We were like, we want to do a banner about COVID-19 and we had a few ideas and we were kind of, I was like, right, well, let's just, you know, people are like going to go, oh, racist, racist, racist. You know what I mean? So I was like, mm. right, we need to go. What is the plan? We were sort of like, well, maybe this is the end of uh, globalisation and can we can have, see like maybe some manufacturing come back. At the end of all this bullshit, maybe we can see some, you know, mm. maybe we can be like, maybe we can fucking bring back some Australian made stuff. So we thought COVID-19 made in China, but the whole idea was like everything's made in China. So it was a bit of a piss take. And the message was more like we wanted to put the message out there like, hey, let's make shit again in mm. Australia. Like. What do you what do you like about the idea of, of making things in Australia, having Australian manufacturing? Dude, I think we could have uh, like my idea around it would I'd be saying like when we have manufacturing jobs in Australia, I don't think we should be paying tax. I don't think there should be tax on manufacturing jobs, and I don't think there should be income tax on manufacturing jobs. It should be like you know instead of me getting paid thirty two bucks an hour. Maybe I should just get 24 bucks an hour, but pay zero tax. And that could give us a competitive edge because, you know, we're not going to be able to compete with Chinese dudes who don't have to use PPE and there's no, and they're paying, getting paid five bucks or $3 an hour. Like it's pretty fucking tough game. You know what I mean? I get it. I understand how it all works, 
But the thing is, it's all about the jobs and simple jobs, simple repetitive jobs for people. You know what I mean? Because not everyone's a fucking rocket scientist. You know what I mean? Some The bulk majority of people need to just have a simple basic job. You know what I mean? And right. man, manufacturing is that good jobs for people. You know what I mean? Mm. And I'm not saying you need to get paid a lot of money. Mm. I reckon fucking we got to reform some tax tax issues around manufacturing you know yeah well i think i think it's actually a really good idea because anytime um you know you talk about like economic action often it's like the government getting involved but sometimes it seems like the answer is the government taking a step back Mm. so i mean when we were doing i think we did uh we did a um, video with my brothers one time during the drought and we were like how about we stop or at least well, well maybe when the drought's back to normal we just say to farmers, you pay way less tax than everybody else. And then we don't have to like, you know, manipulate everything when there is a drought because, you know, you, you'll have a greater capacity to kind of look after yourself. Mm. And I think like, not only do we have, you know, as you say, like we have really high like labor costs compared to other countries, but then we also have really high taxes. And oh, so it makes it yeah. really hard for the companies. Mm. Could be, even companies that want to stay, like I remember Holden, um, they eventually left, but I, I remember seeing some news that they really wanted to stay and, and mm. they just could not make the numbers work. Mm. Yeah. It's like, I mean, there's a lot they could do. Like I think Holden, they could have said, you don't have to pay income tax. Then they could give all the, they could, the workers would take a pay cut, but they're not paying tax. So they end up earning the same money. Do you mm. know what I mean? That mm. saves the company money. And then, you know, sometimes the unions get into these workplaces and I'm not completely against unions, right? But, you know, what I mean, if you're working in a factory and they're paying you 35 bucks an hour mm. and you've walked in there as an unskilled worker and you're on 35 bucks an hour, now all them jobs are gone. They could have said, sorry, guys, we're going to rehire everyone on 22 bucks, 20 bucks an hour. Now, I'm, I would way prefer 100,000 jobs or I don't know how many people they employed. Maybe it was 10,000 people. I'd prefer, I would prefer there to be 10,000 more jobs in Australia that pay $22 an hour than fucking now there's no jobs. Now them jobs are gone. Yeah, there's no jobs, but the politicians will prance around saying how we have like the best you know, wage standards for workers and high minimum mm-hmm. wages. But there's actually the most vulnerable people aren't the people on the low wage. They're the people who don't have the job anymore. Yeah. It sucks. Like I feel for people on the dull, you know what mm. I mean? And I'm like, I don't, I've worked ever since I was, you know, 15, got my, or 14, got my first part-time job in year 11 and 12. I was working two part-time jobs at school. What and then jobs? Uh, first job was working in a fish and chip shop. Yeah. My mate, right. My Kiwi mate, Mary fella, he was a, Mate, I got stories about him. He was a legend, but uh, he was like, "F this job, I hate it. I hate my boss." And I'm, and he's like, "I'm gonna throw in the towel." And I'm like, "Take me in, bro. I want your job." So he took me in. And he said, oh, "I quit, f you." But this guy wants my job, and I was like, "And it was a shit job, man. It was shit, but they paid me yeah. in cash." So, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, look, I've never not had a job. You know what I mean? And I'd fucking hate that feeling. So I feel for all the people out there. You know what I mean? It's way better to have a $20 an hour job than fucking be on the dole. Like I'm telling you. Mm. It's better for your mental health. It's better for every part of bit of your life. Yeah. 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 No, a hundred percent, man. I agree. And so you think if we had, um, it's, it was kind of an interesting way with the banner to, to get that message across. How did you feel like people responded to it? Man, pe- yeah, people like dead set. They're like, beep, 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 just tooting and people like whipping out their phones and fucking walking. It was just like, you know, like we were, they were all zombies and we were like a fresh brain because as soon as that banner went down, all the eyes were like, oh, brains. And they right. just, the phones come out and, yeah. Some people like one dude, two blokes, they were like, it's a bit racist, mate. And I'm like, nah, bro, it's about made in China. Everything's made in China. We'd, we'd you know, want to bring manufacturing back. And they're like, oh, sweet message, bro. And he's just like whipping the camera out. Yeah. But it was probably like, look, it was a bit, it was a bit edgy. And we knew 
yeah, we wanted to have fun. Mm. It could have been anything. Like throwing a banner out, bro, is good fun. Like it could have said whatever. Well, it's a good creative idea, I think. And um, it's always, we found that actually when we actually go out and do stuff as well, like we go mm. to events, it's usually, a, it's usually a pretty good time. And interesting things can, can kind of happen because nobody, well, not nobody, but you don't often get like um, to engage with like other different people you don't know in politics, like in public. When you mm. go to like a, an event, like you've been to a lot of events. I saw that, seen some of your events video. You talked to like Imam Tawidi, you know, among other people. You know, I was like, so drunk, bro, when I got that interview. Eh? I was maggot. Like, did that? I was you? sitting there. Oh, I was sitting there. It was like a Jew, a Christian, and a Muslim walk into a bar. That was the name of the thing. Mm. And RV Killer. Uh, Kiralee Smith, Avi and Imam Twahidi were there. And I was like, I'm thinking, oh, I'm not going to get an interview with any of these people because I just rock up, man, and I'll hit them up like yeah. at the end of the gig and I'll just be like, yo, I want to interview. Yeah. So it's completely unplanned and I'm just sitting there like, it ain't going to fucking happen. So I'm just neck and gears and enjoying the show, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then at the end, it's like, I'm like, yo, Avi, I'm like, you heard of Dusty Bogan? He's like, yeah, yeah Dusty. And I'm like, bang i'm the dusty bug and slap the hat on and he's like hey dusty and then he fucking choke he put me in a sleeper hole day eh? i yeah. got him to choke me out yeah and, uh, yeah well, what did um what did um oh i forgot i forgot my, my mom, question my mom oh. um but anyway let me go yeah. back you know sometimes when you get stumbled in this is why you you bring your notes i go to my little google doc now yeah yeah um yeah. What's, uh, you got, so here we go. Well, you got some, um, <laughs> forgive me for the little interlude. All good. All good. The, um, you eventually got a, uh, a kind of hit piece written on you by the guardian mm. in relation to, um, to Bob Catter and it's, yeah. you know, among associations for, for the proud boys among other things. What did, what did you think of that article? Uh, I mean, I didn't think it was too bad. I think they call me a Christo fascist and all this shit, yeah. you know. They call our fraternity, like, I think they say we have links to white supremacy, right? It's a, it's a classic run of the mill. Oh, bro. Journalist doesn't know what to write. It was the guy in. next, there's me, Bob Catter. On the other side of him is a Fijian, one mm. of the boys, who is the vice president of the Queensland chapter, who mm. was... He was like one of three dudes, one of three founding members to bring our fraternity to Australia, a right. Fijian. So yeah. like they say, oh, we're fucking, we've got connections to white supremacy. And it's like, it's like, hang on a minute, you stupid idiots. Like the, the chairman is a freaking African-American Cuban. Of, yeah. You know what I mean? And you're just yeah. like, every well, who- time they take a photo of us, I think, They've done a, there was a second hit piece and um, there was like a Maori pr- uh, proud boy in that as well. And it's like every time they do a hit piece and they say we've got, we have connections to white supremacists and there's always a black dude in the, in the crew, in the photo with the article. And you're just like, yeah. people aren't fucking stupid. Like, yeah. Well, who are the proud boys for people who are not familiar we're a drinking fraternity. So you, I don't know if you're going to post this on Facebook, you can't talk about it. You can't right. even say the name. So you get to put in the algorithm and, and put up oh, like you, Tommy this, Robinson. For you'll example. probably get in the shit and you, you know, they could take down your stream or your channel. So we're hated. Mm. Um, so the fraternity is just, we're just Western chauvinists. Like we're proud Western patriots and that's for everyone. Any race, any religion can join. And it's all about the club the values of the club, you know what I mean? So uh, pro-free speech, pro-self-defense. Um, We're capitalist, capitalists. We believe in family, like the f- traditional family structure. Um, mm. It's quite like we're quite simple in this, in our value system, you know what I mean? We, we're anti-racist, but we're also anti-racial guilt, you know what mm. I mean? Because there's people with guilt complexes. It's like, Oh, my great grandfather was a fucking whatever. I don't know what was. Who were they? The Vikings or something? Or they colonized some country and you have like, oh my god. Right, right. I don't know. Like I don't know what's up with people. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not it's not surprising that that it's the Guardian of all places that would mm. that would not like you. Very oh, much. you should you should read the White Rose Society one. It's even fucking. Oh, I didn't find it. Maybe I'll oh. see if I can put a link in the description. The White Rose Society one is like the White Rose Society are the ones who tipped off the Guardian. And the oh, White right. Rose Society come into my chat, you know what I mean? Anti-FAR people come into my chat when I'm live. Oh, really? I've, I've been bringing them on, so I'll be like, look, dude, I'll share you the link. Come on, and they'll come on and we'll start chatting. And, right. You know well, I mean? that's good. And, and they'll be like, you're a racist. Right? Yeah. And I'll just be like, oh, okay, Here we go. Man. No, Here that, like one dude who comes on, he's actually not bad. I think there's a, you know, we've got a certain amount of dialogue that's happening now. Yeah. So, well, that's, that's, that's sounds, fun. That sounds positive. And I mean, it yeah. might have been, it must have been a little bit validating to get, um, to get your channel in the Guardian. Oh, you must yeah. be doing something right. They had the link for my YouTube channel in the article. And then, yeah. uh, so they must have like a Guardian troll in my Telegram chat, right? Because I said in the Telegram chat, I'm like, yo, the fucking stupid idiots put the link to my YouTube, an- uh, my YouTube channel in the article. And then it was like fucking five minutes later, the boys like they've edited the article, bro. Your link's taken down. I'm like, oh, oh really? You got a little, you got a, a snitch in the Telegram chat. Yeah, I got. But my Telegram chat's public. Like it's all open, man. Like right. I, got, I got nothing to hide. Like my values are my values. I stand by my beliefs, and mm. you know, it's not to say that all of my beliefs aren't nailed down. You know what I mean? I don't have like a fucking structured bang this is my doctrine yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not moving like yeah you know i'm open to you know i think as definitely i think that's a i think that's actually a really important point and like we try to have the same thing we're like almost our catchphrase we've been saying is like we don't we don't we got no idea what we're doing it's because mm-hmm. we're trying to learn things but at the end of the day like you never stop learning things and it's really hard to like be an expert in anything right mm, yeah. um and you there's so much stuff that you don't know and you just have to trust other people or evaluate what they have to say yeah i'm like i'm interviewing people and going to rallies and shows and i'm like i don't know jack about this subject yeah. i'm sitting there like learning listening and then i'm like half pissed and then be like oh yeah i think you said this yeah you know i'm like yeah and they're probably just like, you're an idiot. No, nah, I don't know. Yeah. But I'm having fun. Like, I'm learning it on my feet too, you know what I mean? And I think there's simple stuff where, you know, that I do believe in. Like, I believe in the free market and I just want to work. I just want to be able to say what I want to say. And I think the government, you know, they like using our – the government is our taxpayers' dollars, right? So if they're taking my money – I'm going to have a fucking say about what they're spending it on, what they're doing with it. If they want to pay for an abortion, they want to abort an aba- a baby with my money, I'm having a fucking say. If you want to put a green injection in some old cunt and take his life, I'm going to have a say about it. Like, hmm. What made you What made you start having an interest in, in politics? How, hmm. Were you always interested? Yeah, I was, I've always been like a buff just sit there fucking watching the news, you know, and yelling at the TV. But uh, like I volunteered in youth groups and in my local church for like 10 years, hardcore, probably, probably seven hours a week for like 10 years, bro. Just heaps, youth groups, Sunday school, young adults, all these like men's Sunday school teacher. Uh, Yeah. My missus was, got she got asked to do it and i'm like she's like you're helping me and i was like you know i was like oh this is awkward but then after a while you're like you'd be a pretty good sunday school teacher yeah you're like singing kids songs and you know i never thought like you'd be i'd be doing that but you're like Mm. yeah he's singing these funny kids songs and mate them kids love me hey yeah just be like just like this mad uh because you might you be wearing the same hat maybe (laughs) <laughs> no, I would always have a beard, so the kids would always be like, Argh. "Oh, really?" Just be like, "Don't touch Ooh, me." No. How did um to make Australia great again? Blue hat. You got I quite I, I like a lot the um merchandise you have on your website as well. Mm. Um, what's the what's the space theme? Can I ask about like when I see on your t-shirts and stuff? <laughs> I reckon it's just more that you know I'm, I rabble on about 
some crazy ass crap you know what i mean yeah and I always I always rabble on be like you know about uh more like if you talk about like the genesis creation story and i'll be like yeah mate the sign you know they'll say you know there's a there's a multiverse and there's billions yeah. of different galaxies and like there's all these different dimensions i'm like you're telling yeah. me there's not you know there's not a fucking yeah. heaven yeah you're telling me there's not the spirit realm like that full of shit like you know and i'll just be like no nah, we're gonna fucking so i just go a bit into you know a bit of well do you get do you get pseudo into science the, um, and shit you know do you get into like any of the alex jones like aliens from different dimensions oh i love it mate. i love it it's um i've i i get it in in doses but um i'm always i, I partly i think i might be a bit scared to like find out if it's actually true or not yeah if you have it at a safe distance you can just like have a yeah. laugh and get like slightly yeah. uncomfortable when he raises facts that are just totally crazy and you check them up and they're true but that's about as much as i've gone into alex What's i reckon your... it's fun like it's funny and it's fun and why not like i'm sure these freak like it's always these freakos who are so concerned about it, what we're saying you know they're so uptight and they want to fucking you know shadow ban us or fucking de-platform us and it's like hang on a minute what are you fucking afraid about when they de-platform guys like Alex Jones, you're like, what are they saying? That there's some truth to it? They don't yeah. want us to hear it? Like, and for the most part, who the fuck knows? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. But I have fun reading, like, some mad conspiracy theory, you know what I mean? Or some dude's out there theology or whatever. I'll be like, yeah, man, I'll, I just want to hear it. I want to learn about it. I'll doesn't necessarily mean I believe it. Yeah, well, but was it the past couple of days you did one on. Um, I didn't watch it, but I saw the title. It was on MK Ultra. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I've heard the name before, but I don't. I don't know much about it. At yeah. all. What? What? In short, what? What is it? Like MK Ultras, where they tested people in um with like LSD and stuff, and they tried to use oh, really? it. They want to see if there was like they could get use mind control, maybe for their soldiers or you know white people's memories and all this shit like i'm yeah. pretty sure they so they had this uh you know they did all these putting people in hyperbaric chamber chambers and all this stuff is it sensory deprivation tanks yeah, and all this stuff and right. make them take lsd and and i think they're like the conspiracy theory side of it is like um tapping the mind into like another dimension do you know what i mean like yeah connecting like, with the spirit realm you know what deals I mean? with the aliens yeah yeah with the like demonic yeah because i think like if there's a multiverse like i'd be i'm sad if there's a multiverse i'm pretty sure the aliens are like interdimensional that's all that's what i reckon like yeah you know we look so far out there and we're like there's nothing they haven't found shit you know what i mean yeah. I swear there's got to be like an interdimensional right, things realm. Right, that we just can't, we can't perceive, things we can't see. Maybe we'll be able to see and work it out in the, in the future, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think, I think like MK Ultra is like a perfect example of them spending an F load of money screwing around with people to like, they've looked into it. They've tried to look into it. We know that this is a fact. Yeah. And it was probably that like fear of the communists. They're like, we're fucking afraid of these commies. But I think yeah. they're like, because if you see Stranger Things, it's like they're doing all their crazy experiments. Because I'm like, imagine what the Russians are doing. Like we right. need to like, there's nothing's off, the, nothing's off the table because they're so paranoid about what the Russians are doing. Yeah, you know, so they're just like, we'll fucking do every, any, you know, kind of eugenics crazy crap they can do. They don't care. Like there was, that was a time in history. Maybe that shit still happens. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I get what I get worried about sometimes in like artificial intelligence is not that we'll create something that's like, well, will it ultimately I'm scared that we'll create something that is, that's just like way smarter than us. Um, mm. That, that, that'll be bad news, but I don't think it'll be like, Oh, we, we created it. Um, just because we wanted to, it'll be like, oh, North Korea was like catching up or Russia was catching up and it'll just get into like an uncontrollable race. Because mm. maybe North Korea is happy to take the risk for having like super AI soldiers, but mm. we're not, but we just mm. decide to do it before them. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we could just be like, 
the Russians, if we don't do it, the Russians will. Yeah. So you might as well like bang, put yeah. fucking hook Skynet in, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, Press I the get, fucking button. That's what, that's what I, I do get a bit worried about it. And some people say it's <laughs> like, um, like the potential, like the timeline yeah. you're looking at would be like 50 years away. Mm. But then <clears throat> Sam Harris goes like, well, if, if it's 50 years away, um, what if there was like an asteroid which might hit Earth that was 50 years away? Like we'd probably be freaking out. Um, mm. But because we can't really see it, the AI stuff right now, we're not, we're not like freaking out about it that much. Like mm. Elon Musk company, like Neurochip, we're just putting in like computer chips into people's brains. Like it gets me nervous, man. <laughs> I'm kind of like happy with living life, how I'm doing it. Like mm. I don't really, if they, you know, create this mad fucking chip i'm probably gonna be like you know what i'm pretty satisfied with the uh five senses dude yeah and just my imagination and to think like i feel pretty good like i don't know if i'm could be tempted into it like i'm pretty content kind of guy so yeah like i think there would come a point where there would be like that the tension would be like do I want to do this? You know what I mean? Yeah. You want Everyone to like fucking plug it. the chip in and be like, yo, yeah, I'm in. And I'd just be like, fuck that. You'd become like a, uh, the, the runt of the litter. You know what I mean? If everyone's jacked up on bloody microchips mm. and you just be like, they'll be like, you're nothing. I'd be like, yeah. Oh fuck. They're yeah. all superhumans. Yeah. I'd be like, Oh fuck. Nah. Yeah. Who knows? Well, I mean, like Elon Musk talks about this shit. You know what I mean? It's like one of his concerns. Yeah. Did you watch the Joe Rogan interview with Elon? Yeah, it was cool, man. I loved it. Yeah, it, it is good. And he comes off as, um, you get freaked out by watching that man. Like he's, he, mm-hmm. the way he comes off, like how he just thinks he just doesn't really have like much hope for anything. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, maybe, you know, you think about how much the government's spending right now, isn't it like a hundred and eighty billion or yeah. probably three? It'll probably be way more than that. You know what I mean? It's going to be half a trillion dollars they're going to spend by the end of this. Yeah, well, and not- I just think to myself, like, why can't we build? Why can't we go and build the nuclear power plants and the desalination plants and the dams and drought-proof the nation and mm-hmm. let's build some high-tech technology let's build it here let's do something Mm. like i was saying about the manufacturing like what happens if they did tax free for shares when it comes to manufacturing you can invest in australian manufacturing shares tax free Mm. imagine if you're a worker and you're in this factory you don't have to pay tax in the factory on your wage they're not paying tax and then you have an opportunity to reinvest your money into the companies and any profit you make off your shares, you don't have to pay tax on either. And it's just mm. creating more and more wealth, mm. more and more shit in this country. I'll tell you, we'd be product, we'd be able to be profitable. It would work. Well, it'd be awesome just that the, the bureaucrats who don't get a cut wouldn't be very happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Some silly bogan just created the story. They'll be like, yeah, he's just a fucking idiot. Who, um, do you have any favorite politicians? Do you have any politicians you like or follow? I reckon Malcolm Roberts is a mad little legend, eh? Like, mm. he's just a solid dude. I've met him so many times. Yeah, you've and, been um, in real life. Dude, he'll, he'll interview you, like, straight up. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe they've tightened the reins a bit because they've been screwed over that many times, like mm. One Nation. So, yeah, I don't know. But I had a few, like, good interviews with him and he will, he will talk about anything. He's just open as he'll talk to anyone. He'll go down any rabbit hole you want to go down and well, that's, um, that's he'll good, do man. it on air. He'll do it live. He's like fearless. He just doesn't, he's not afraid of the, the shit spin that they're going to put on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, since we've been like in lockdown in self isolation or whatever, we've been like reaching out to a bunch of people and trying to get some politicians like, and, mm. and I've been complaining about this basically to each guest uh, since that happened on the zoom podcast. But um, we reached out to our local member and they're part of like the, the cabinet in, um, in, in, in the liberal party. Mm. And they're like, Oh, you know, we're, we're afraid, you know, he'll kind of go off script or he's got to stick. He's, he's, he can only say certain things. So we're not going to do it. Mm. And, 
It's all dot like, points, bro. And it's like, like what are we what are we paying you for? Like, you literally have nothing else to do. Mm. They just want yeah, that job. Good. They want that job and fucking the UN when they're done, brother. Mm. You know what I mean? If they can get the abortion laws and the whatever crazy shit they can bring in, whatever UN, like there'll be some UN fucking list of crazy shit to bring in, you know, that they want. And they'll be like, if you, if you hit any of them, they're guaranteed a job for life in the UN once they're done in politics. Like, the fucking sellouts, yeah. mate. Like, yeah, well, I mean, I don't know how it's just, I don't know how it's sweet that, um, like, Julie Bishop gives a big donation to the Clinton Foundation. Oh, sorry, it's Gillard gives a big donation to the Clinton Foundation then just goes on the uh, Clinton Foundation board. Mm. Um, you know, it's like, oh, obviously, right. there's a big conflict of interest right there. Yeah. But, I mean, with other politicians, like, it's, it's not that obvious. But, I mean... When Mike Baird stopped being the New South Wales Premier, he walked into, I think, a job, like a big job as head of uh, consumer something at NAB, I think. And I only heard about that because he recently stepped down. Mm. Oh, but, yeah, mate. And they get their fucking pension and their suite. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I'll be taking that thing would be the first thing to go. Mm. Rip that pension up and just be like, you're fucking done with that. <laughs> Fuck yous. The only people who should be getting, like, you know, say you and I get a pension, whatever, if you don't have millions of dollars, you you know, they do a they do a test or some shit, don't they? Yeah. So they'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, you have too many assets, too much money, you can't get the pension, whatever. The only people I reckon should get extra are, like, fucking soldiers, veterans, probably veteran police officers and maybe, like, paramedics. People have to deal with horrendous shit you know what i mean yeah. like i give the tip of the hat to them people like i go to work and when i'm done at the end of the day i'm fucking out of there mate i just tip a beer down my neck and i'm like hit the fucking delete button it's it's over yeah but these people who are you know scraping the dead bodies off the ground some drunken idiot who wraps himself around a pole or you know, dealing with ice addicts all day and fucking rapists. Like, imagine the imagine the fucking cops. What a shit job that is. They yeah, should be well, getting getting more in their pension, not these stupid fucking politicians. Yeah, well, I had a like a kind of childhood friend and who um, who became became a police officer like not too long ago, but left after like the first week because he was the first one to get. Uh, to arrive at like two scenes of suicide and he had to like, mm. like kind of deal with it. Mm. Um, you know, it's like traumatic, weird, like experiences. But one mm. of the things that could definitely help fix it is you find like the people who are like making the biggest contribution. And like you said before, you just like, say you can actually keep all the money you make. Um, mm. That would do, that would do a lot to kind of, to really help it. I think. Mm. Mm. Like the coppers, what not paying tax or some shit? Yeah, so, like if, yeah, yeah. If, if, yeah, if they didn't pay tax and um, but doctors as well. Like I've been thinking, like imagine would that? Uh, I don't know. Like I'm not an expert in mm. healthcare, definitely not an expert yeah. in economics either. But would the health system get way better if like nurses didn't pay tax or like doctors didn't pay tax? Like maybe that's something you should mm. think about. You know, it'd be freaking. It'd be mad if I was just wondering. You know, you could have a. I would wonder if you had a system where they went full libertarian and they were like, oh, education and healthcare costs, you know, 20% of your tax money is education. Another 20% goes to health. They could be like, we'll give you that back and then you can engage the private sector. Right. You can go to a private school or a private hospital and they could just privatise it all and leave the gut. Like maybe you could have like, the people on the dole have access to, you know, we might pay for their private health care or something. Maybe there, maybe there is a better way. You know what I mean? Yeah. You try and introduce like some competition somehow. Mm. You yeah, look at like the worst thing I reckon going is uh, land tax or our land rates at the moment. There's no competition in that. There's no competition in the water. You know, you how, pay does, your, how does it work? I don't know how it works. Oh, when you own a house, like you got to pay your quarterly water bill and your right. quarterly rates bill, right? Yeah. There's no competition. Like my power bill has been on the fucking slow decline because it's, I just re, 
I'll just ring up different companies and be like, yo, what do you got? Yeah. What deal have you got for me? My phone company, my insurance company. I can ring up every 12 months at the start of the year. I just go, what's going on? I'm fucking leaving you. I'm yeah. going somewhere else. Yeah. And then they like offer me another, you know, discount. And I'm like, sweet, fucking slam the phone down. Yeah. Like I want that for my water bill. I want that for my land tax. So, like there's got to be some way we can introduce the private sector and competition. Like this is, this is how the free market works through mm. competition. We get a better deal, but mm. we're getting fucked by the government because they just like, well, they privatize shit into a monopoly. Here's a question. That, here's a question that I've been, I've been really thinking over in, in my mind. Cause you know, when you say like, Okay, well, if you ask the question, why do we need taxes? The first thing people say, well, who's going to build the roads, right? Mm. Then you look at how the government actually builds the roads. They'll tax you for the road. Then they'll pay a private company to, to build it. And then if the road is any good, they'll whack another big toll on top of it, right? So if you're in mm. Sydney, there's um, new uh, like uh, highways, whatever you call them, being built. One's called like West Connects, for example. Yeah. And it'll cost you like 10 bucks each like to go each way. Mm. Um, and if you're a person who's, who's not making a lot of money, that might represent like one hour of your working day. Not to yeah. mention that the, ro the roads are so bad anyway, you lose another hour to traffic. Mm. And so it's like, you're telling me that there are people that can't drive to work because it's too expensive uh, in the tolls, but they've also been taxed out of their money. And it's like, I don't know if that's a good enough answer of why mm. people should be taxed yeah. in the first place. Like it, it, oh, and then, and then like our fuel tax is the same. Like I'm pretty sure they introduced the fuel tax and they said, oh, this is just a, this is for roads. You know what I mean? And yeah. now, now they're saying it's like, I think it's 70 cents in every liter that you pay in fuel tax in fuel, 70 cents in every liter is tax. Yeah. And then they've, they've like done the maths and they're like, it was supposed to all go on infrastructure. It was all supposed to go get funneled into roads right and they've done the maths on it and it's only like 30 percent of that goes to roads and yeah. then fucking 70 percent of it goes to pay for the fucking pension so these something. yeah probably paying to abort babies in africa or some shit for the mm. for the un to abort babies in africa and fucking pay for these goblins pensions you know what i mean mm. But yeah, the tolls are the same dude like they'll be like it's pretty much they're trying to privatize it and they'll do a toll road and bang up a fucking you end up paying through the roof to drive down the street you know yeah yeah mm. it's 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 super weird man um what have you um for our listeners i know we've got to compete with the uh survivor finale is it which is on in in yeah yeah not yeah, too yeah, long. yeah i'm a survivor freak nah i love yeah? survivor it's good what do you like i watch like one i think i watched one episode at my cousin's house but i've never yeah. i've never been on like following this it, it's probably a bit of nostalgia like i've watched it ever since i was a kid you know with my brothers and it's like yeah we loved it and then it's been going for so long that show so it's just like you know i'll watch every season and hook yeah. in my missus loves it too and it, it's a bit like there's a bit of you know stabbing in the back action happening yeah. a bit of a uh, bit of cunningness to it a bit of mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's like the real world, isn't it? Like, you know how we're living in this bubble wrapped PC culture and everything's fucking, you know, oh, oh, you can't say that. You watch Survivor and they're just like, yeah, mate, I'll fucking vote with you. And they turn that back for a minute. They're like, we're going to fuck this guy over. Yeah. And well, you're just like, oh, the real world. The it's politicians almost like... are there taking notes on, <laughs> on how to vote. Yeah, there's a bit of like, there's a bit of grit into it, in it. you know, there's some asshole moves in it there's a bit yeah. of comp competition sort of like i reckon you'd be man. a good survivor contestant dusty Ah, uh, have you thought you definitely would have thought about it before the foul mouth they wouldn't let me on you know what i mean i'd probably talk too much shit and then you just do hold them down and talk about politics nah they'd just be like you're over there can't yeah. i'm sleeping outside the camp nah well so what if you um before we let you go What's um? What can people see on your channel? You do make a lot of different types of videos, but if mm. someone was to, to to subscribe, what what type of stuff would they be seeing? Yeah, dude, I'm just more like 
look for some funny news articles to read and just take the piss and have a laugh, really, you know what I mean? A bit of uh, conspiracy theories, a bit of, I'm a Christian, so I, I like to go through the Bible and try to reconcile a bit of pseudoscience and conspiracy theories and crazy, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just like story time and having a laugh and a joke, you know what I mean? And, yeah, I'm a probably a bit, I'll, you know, a bit, bit of libertarianism, a bit of conservative you know, values going on, some uh, patriotic love of Australia and Western culture. But, you know, I'm definitely, I'm, you know, they'll say, oh, this dude's a racist, this dude's a whatever. They could, I'm sure the Guardian's got a nice big fucking list of all mm. the things that I am. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? To find yeah. out for yourself. <laughs> yeah. But, um, well, look, I've really enjoyed watching some of your videos over the over the past few days. I'll be sure to keep up with it. Um, we'll send people to your YouTube, your website, um, where they can pick up some cool merchandise. Can they buy the, the, the hat on the website? I just sold out, but I'll do another run of them, eh? All right, it sounds- doubles as a burqa for all you uh, transgender Muslims or, you know what I mean, whatever. All right. Whatever's I happening. can feel the, the Guardian just got their sound bite. Yeah, um, and I like to put a bit of aluminum foil, a bit of alfoil in the inside of my hat, you know what I mean? Just to, just yeah. a tip for anyone who buys one. Yeah, all righty. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll send everyone that way. Is there anywhere else besides website and, and YouTube? Uh, if you go to the website, you can get links to all my social media, you know what I mean? So I'm sure I'll have a short life on Facebook. This is my second run at it, so... Yeah. I'm sure they'll try to de-platform me off that one. So I'm more like I'm dual streaming on DLive and YouTube. So I'm kind of building up a backup channel on DLive in anticipation of, you know, of the, Zach. the censorship going, yeah. on, going on crazy everywhere. So I recommend Telegram, Telegram and DLive. I recently got on Telegram. Yeah. Um, I uh, still haven't really worked out how to use it. I found D is actually promoting more of my stuff on there than I am. Yeah. Um, but we're getting there eventually. We'll, we'll set, we'll put all those links in the description, go subscribe to Dustin Bogan, get some fun, refreshing commentary, I would say on what's going on in the world. Mm. And you might also find some profound insights. Uh, if you, if you go deep enough, thanks for talking with me, Dusty. I hope to, Sweet, brother. to talk with you at some point soon. But uh, have a good night. Enjoy Survivor and we'll see you soon. Thanks, brother. I'll have you on my channel soon, huh? Awesome. Legend.